Roger de Mortimer, 3rd Baron Mortimer, 1st Earl of March, was an English nobleman and powerful marcher lord who gained many estates in the Welsh marches and Ireland following his advantageous marriage to the wealthy heiress Joan de Geneville, 2nd Baroness Geneville. In November 1316, he was appointed Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London in 1322 for having led the Marcher Lords in a revolt against King Edward II in what became known as the Despenser War. He later escaped to France, where he was joined by Edward's Queen Consort Isabella, whom he took as his mistress. After he and Isabella led a successful invasion and rebellion, Edward was subsequently deposed. Mortimer allegedly arranged his murder at Berkeley Castle. For three years, Mortimer was de facto ruler of England before being himself overthrown by Edward's eldest son, Edward III. Accused of assuming royal power and other crimes, Mortimer was executed by hanging at Tyburn. Early life, Mortimer, grandson of Roger Mortimer, first Baron Mortimer and Maud de Branos, Baroness Mortimer, was born at Igmore Castle, Herefordshire, England, the firstborn of Marcher Lord Edmund Mortimer, second Baron Mortimer and Margaret Duffins. Edmund Mortimer was a second son, intended for minor orders and a clerical career, but on the sudden death of his elder brother Ralph, Edmund was recalled from Oxford University and installed as heir. According to his biographer Ian Mortimer, Roger was possibly sent as a boy away from home to be fostered in the household of his formidable uncle, Roger Mortimer de Chirk. It was this uncle who had carried the severed head of Lywell in Ap Gruffudd of Wales to King Edward I in 1282. Like many noble children of his time, Roger was betrothed at a young age, to Joan de Geneville, the daughter of Sir Piers de Geneville, of Trim Castle and Ludlow. They were married on September 20, 1301. Their first child was born in 1302. Marriage, through his marriage with Joan de Geneville, Roger not only acquired numerous possessions in the Welsh marches, including the important Ludlow Castle, which became the chief stronghold of the Mortimers, but also extensive estates and influence in Ireland. However, Joan de Geneville was not an heiress at the time of her marriage. Her grandfather Geoffrey de Geneville, at the age of 80 in 1308, conveyed most, but not all, of his Irish lordships to Roger Mortimer, and then retired, notably alive. He finally died in 1314, with Joan succeeding as Shuo Jury second Baroness Geneville. During his lifetime Geoffrey also conveyed much of the remainder of his legacy, such as Kenlys, to his younger son Simon de Geneville, who had meanwhile become Baron of Culmullen through marriage to Joanna Fitzleon. Roger Mortimer therefore succeeded to the eastern part of the Lordship of Meth, centred on Trim and its stronghold of Trim Castle. He did not succeed, however, to the lordship of Fingal. Military adventures in Ireland and Wales, Roger Mortimer's childhood came to an abrupt end when his father was mortally wounded in a skirmish near Billoth in July 1304. Since Roger was underage at the death of his father, he was placed by King Edward I under the guardianship of Piers Gaveston, 1st Earl of Cornwall. However, on May 22, 1306, in a lavish ceremony in Westminster Abbey with 259 others, he was knighted by Edward and granted livery of his full inheritance. His adult life began in earnest in 1308, when he went to Ireland in person to enforce his authority. This brought him into conflict with the de Lacys, who turned for support to Edward Bruce, brother of Robert Bruce, King of Scots. Mortimer was appointed Lord Lieutenant of Ireland by Edward II on November 23, 1316. Shortly afterwards, at the head of a large army, he drove Bruce to Carrickfergus and the de Lacys into Connaught, wreaking vengeance on their adherents whenever they were to be found. He returned to England and Wales in 1318 and was then occupied for some years with baronial disputes on the Welsh border. Opposition to Edward II Mortimer became disaffected with his king and joined the growing opposition to Edward II and the Despensers. After the younger Despenser was granted lands belonging to him, he and the Marchers began conducting devastating raids against Despenser property in Wales. He supported Humphrey de Bowen, 4th Earl of Hereford, in refusing to obey the king's summons to appear before him in 1321. Mortimer led a march against London his men wearing the Mortimer uniform which was green with a yellow sleeve. 
he was prevented from entering the capital, although his forces put it under siege. These acts of insurrection compelled the Lord's ordainers led by Thomas, second Earl of Lancaster, to order the king to banish the Despenses in August. When the king led a successful expedition in October against Margaret de Clare, Baroness Badlesmere, after she had refused Queen Isabella admittance to Leeds Castle, he used his victory and new popularity among the moderate lords and the people to summon the Despenses back to England. Mortimer, in company with other marcher lords, led a rebellion against Edward, which is known as the Despenser War, at the end of the year. Forced to surrender to the king at Shrewsbury in January 1322, Mortimer was consigned to the Tower of London, but by drugging the constable, escaped to France in August 1323 pursued by warrants for his capture dead or alive. In the following year Queen Isabella, anxious to escape from her husband, obtained his consent to her going to France to use her influence with her brother, King Charles IV, in favour of peace. At the French court the Queen found Roger Mortimer, who became her lover soon afterwards. At his instigation, she refused to return to England so long as the Despenses retained power as the King's favourites. Historians have speculated as to the date at which Mortimer and Isabella actually became lovers. The modern view is that it began while both were still in England, and that after a disagreement, Isabella abandoned Roger to his fate in the Tower. His subsequent escape became one of medieval England's most colourful episodes. However almost certainly Isabella risked everything by chancing Mortimer's companionship and emotional support when they first met again at Paris four years later. King Charles IV's protection of Isabella at the French court from despenses would be assassins played a large part in developing the relationship. In 1326, Mortimer moved as Prince Edward's guardian to Hainault, but only after a furious dispute with the Queen, demanding she remain in France. Isabella retired to raise troops in her county of Ponthieu. Mortimer arranged the invasion fleet supplied by the Hainaulters. Invasion of England and defeat of Edward II, the scandal of Isabella's relations with Mortimer compelled them both to withdraw from the French court to Flanders, where they obtained assistance for an invasion of England from Count William of Hainault, although Isabella did not arrive from Ponthieu until the fleet was due to sail. Landing in the River Oral on September 24, 1326, they were accompanied by Prince Edward and Henry, Earl of Lancaster. London rose in support of the Queen and Edward took flight to the west, pursued by Mortimer and Isabella. After wandering helplessly for some weeks in Wales, the king was taken prisoner on November 16, and was compelled to abdicate in favour of his son. Though the latter was crowned as Edward III of England on January 25, 1327, the country was ruled by Mortimer and Isabella, who were widely believed to have arranged the murder of Edward II the following September at Berkeley Castle. Historian and biographer of Roger Mortimer and Edward III, Ian Mortimer, retells the old story that the ex king was not killed and buried in 1327, but secretly remained alive at Corfe Castle. When Mortimer besieged the castle, Edward II was said to escape to Rome, where he stayed under papal protection. Powers won and lost, rich estates and offices of profit and power were now heaped on Mortimer. He was made constable of Wallingford Castle and in September 1328 he was created Earl of March. However, although in military terms he was far more competent than the Despensers, his ambition was troubling to all. His own son Geoffrey, the only one to survive into old age, mocked him as the King of Folly. During his short time as ruler of England he took over the lordships of Denby, Ossestry, and Clun. He was also granted the marcher lordship of Montgomery by the Queen. The jealousy and anger of many nobles were aroused by Mortimer's use of power. Henry, Earl of Lancaster, one of the principals behind Edward II's deposition, tried to overthrow Mortimer, but the action was ineffective as the young king passively stood by. Then, in March 1330, Mortimer ordered the execution of Edmund, Earl of Kent, the half-brother of Edward II. After this execution Henry Lancaster prevailed upon the young king, Edward III, to assert his independence. In October 1330, a parliament was summoned to Nottingham, just days before Edward's 18th birthday, and Mortimer and Isabella were seized by Edward and his companions from inside Nottingham Castle. 
in spite of Isabella's entreaty to her son, fair son, have pity on the gentle Mortimer, Mortimer was conveyed to the tower. Accused of assuming royal power and of various other high misdemeanors, he was condemned without trial and ignominiously hanged at Tyburn on November 29, 1330, his vast estates forfeited to the crown. His body hung at the gallows for two days and nights in full view of the populace. Mortimer's widow Joan received a pardon in 1336 and survived till 1356. She was buried beside Mortimer at Ignore, but the site was later destroyed. In 2002, the actor John Shalley, the current owner of the remaining buildings of Ignore Abbey, invited the BBC programme House Detectives at Large to investigate his property. During the investigation, a document was discovered in which Mortimer's widow Joan petitioned Edward III for the return of her husband's body so she could bury it at Edmore Abbey. Mortimer's lover Isabella had buried his body at Greyfriars in Coventry following his hanging. Edward III replied, Let his body rest in peace. The king later relented, and Mortimer's body was transferred to Edmore Abbey, where Joan was later buried beside him. Children of Roger and Joan the marriages of Mortimer's children cemented Mortimer's strengths in the West. Sir Edmund Mortimer K.N.T. married Elizabeth de Bad Lesmere. They produced Roger Mortimer, second Earl of March, who was restored to his grandfather's title. Margaret Mortimer married Thomas de Berkeley, third Baron Berkeley. Maud Mortimer married John de Charlton, Lord of Powys. Geoffrey Mortimer, John Mortimer, Joan Mortimer married James Audley. 2nd Baron Audley, Isabella Mortimer, Catherine Mortimer, married Thomas de Beecham, 11th Earl of Warwick, Agnes Mortimer, married Lawrence Hastings, 1st Earl of Pembroke, Beatrice Mortimer, who married firstly, Edward of Norfolk, son and heir apparent of Thomas of Brotherton, by whom she had no issue, and secondly, before September 13, 1337, Thomas de Bruce, by whom she had three sons and three daughters. Blanche Mortimer, married Peter de Grandison, 2nd Baron Grandison. Royal descendants, through his son Sir Edmund Mortimer, he is an ancestor of the last Plantagenet monarchs of England from King Edward IV to Richard III. By Edward IV's daughter, Elizabeth of York, the Earl of March is an ancestor to King Henry VIII and to all subsequent monarchs of England. Ancestry Notes References Richardson, Douglas of Erringham, Kimball G., ed. Plantagenet Ancestry, A Study in Colonial and Medieval Families II. Salt Lake City. ISBN 1449966349. Mortimer, Ian. The Greatest Traitor, The Life of Sir Roger Mortimer, Ruler of England 1327 a Euro 1330. New York, St. Martin's Press. ISBN 0-312-34941-6. Ian Mortimer, The Death of Edward II in Berkeley Castle, English Historical Review, CXX, 489, 1175-1214. Ara Davis, Mortimer, Roger, First Earl of March, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, Oxford University Press, September 2004. Online Eden. January 2008, 2, Access December 19, 2009. Ancestral Roots of Certain American Colonists Who Came to America Before 1700 by Frederick Lewis Woolley. Lines, 10 a Euro 31, 29 a Euro 32, 29 a Euro 33, 39 a Euro 31, 47 b 33, 71 a Euro 33, 71 a 32, 120 a Euro 33, 176 B32, 263 a Euro 31, Calendar of the Gormanston Register, Dublin, 1916. Preston Genealogy, by Sir Thomas Wentworth, May 1636, A. Weir, Isabella She Wolf of France, Queen of England. G. W. Watson, Geoffrey de Mortimer and His Descendants. J. H. Round, The Landing of Queen Isabella. D.A. Harding, The Regime of Isabella and Mortimer, 1326 a Euro 1330, M. Philthesis. C. G. Crump, The Arrest of Roger Mortimer and Queen Isabel, 
331 a euro 2, Derek Pratt, the Marcher Lordship of Chirk, 1329 a euro 1330. External links, Igmore Castle, BBC House Detectives at Large Press Release.